Um, maybe I'll switch over into English. Uh, as, as you know, we, we have a number of doctors who are speaking fluently Finnish, but they are unfortunately mostly in Finland now. <laughs> so uh, we, we will continue in, in English, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm particularly glad that, uh, uh, that uh, Lauri is here, because Lauri is working for Finnish Medical Association as, as health policy advisor. He's a, he's a doctor by <clears throat> his background, and uh, he will talk about the uh, uh, situation about physicians' autonomy, professional autonomy in Finland. And I'm partic particularly glad, because I didn't know before we started to prepare this session, that uh, the uh, Finnish Medical Association has dedicated two years, this one and next year, to be uh, to the, uh, specifically to professional autonomy, uh, to talk and uh, maybe to give some solutions. And that's why I'm, I'm, I'm very glad to, to, to have you here and, and give the floor to you. Yeah. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you very much for, for inviting me here to speak. It's, it's a very great honor to come here. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm replacing here uh, our head of Finnish Medical Association, Heikki Palve. Uh, 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 but he had a, he, he would come here, but he had some commitments in, in Finland where he must attend to. So I'm replacing here him, but I'm, I'm, uh, I hope that I feel his shoes at least somewhat. So why I'm speaking here uh, today is uh, that, uh, like Indre Koro said, we, had a, we have in Finland, in Finnish Medical Association, a, as a kind of a project, two-year project, to, to assess what is the current state of physician, physician's autonomy, our professional autonomy currently, and what kind of a future prospects may be related to that autonomy, and then most important, is there something concrete which we have to do to preserve the autonomy as, or, or de 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 to develop the autonomy as, as we like to, like to uh, that it would develop in future. So in, in this presentation, I, have, uh, I will first a little bit describe this, our project, and then, then, then some perspectives on, on physicians' autonomy which have been raised during during this process until until now there's maybe some some common issues where uh, Indrek was was uh, describing in in the earlier pr presentation firstly what is what is actually meant with autonomy what, what would we have thought what autonomy actually means and then what is the current state of autonomy and then some future prospects i have two two kind of uh, cases which are at least at least kind of uh, interesting from from the perspective of future uh, this our project project lasts two years. It it started it was started last year, and uh, why we have this is uh, the concrete concrete thing is that our strategy of Finnish Medical Association, which was devised in or made in 2011 and lasting 2017, one subtopic there is uh, that professional autonomy is secured or one 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 the sub target there. And why, why that is uh, written there is maybe that there has been raised some concerns maybe during last decade that uh, our professionally, professional autonomy is, is at, at risk or threatened some, some way. And, and maybe we have to kind of be, be careful that it, is it kind of a threatened in some way. And why one, one uh, kind of uh, thing in background there is maybe that Healthcare regulation is, is has increased in the last two two decades, and healthcare system has been more complex, and patient pathways has been been more complex, and so on. And and also we we have uh, thought that, of course, the society is always changing, always in gradual change, and also medicine is changing and developing, and healthcare system is changing, and in this constant change, we have to time to time assess what is the kind of a situation, situ, situation of the autonomy, our professional autonomy in, in, in that change. 
concretely, this project, so it's uh, two years, we are trying to involve the whole profession to uh, think about autonomy and discuss about autonomy and, and think, think, think what, what are the key issues in autonomy. And actually, the whole office of Finnish Medical Association is, is taking part to this process, more or less. Uh, uh, head of the project is, is Heikki Pärve, who is head of Finnish Medical Association. Also, all different bodies or organs of the Finnish Medical Association has been involved to think and deal, deal, deal with it, this project. And also members as much as possible. Uh, this is the theme year we have in, in Finland, in Finnish Medical Association. Association we have uh, quite many years, we have uh, some theme year, and this is the theme year of autonomy. Also, uh, Finnish Arsti de Päiv, which was held in January, the one, one of the main themes there was autonomy. And also autonomy has been uh, discussed in our magazine for many times in, in, during this process. And, and also many local membership meetings, there, there has been the topic of, of autonomy. So then uh, some uh, some first some general re reflections on, on this process. First, first of all, I have to underline that ideas and, and and things which I present here are more like my personal reflections of the process or ideas which has been brought up in the process as as the process is still going on. We have a goal that it it would would end in last end of the, this year, and then we have a kind of a final outcome which is so thought to be some kind of a doc document which uh, kind of, uh, kind of uh, assess the current, current state of autonomy and, and, and in that document there will be decided also concrete actions what should be, should be carried out in the near future. Well, first notion is that actually the autonomy is a more, more complex question than first we anticipated. Uh, First of all, it's not very easy to define uh, what is what is actu actually the autonomy. Or if we have, if we start to discuss, like with, with physicians about autonomy, or ask about physicians, what do you think the autonomy is, or what autonomy means to you, we get very different answers. And and actually, the first of all, it's important to have a kind of a, some same common I definition definition when, when we start to discuss about autonomy. And also, I, I think it's a little bit challenging what, what, are, what things in our healthcare system or society are related, closely related to autonomy. Very easily the discussion tends to go some, some other parts and a little bit away from the autonomy itself, and, and we have to always try to keep the focus in, in, in actual, actual autonomy. Well, the first thought of autonomy, if you started to think it, it's, it's, a, that's, it's about freedom, uh, especially freedom of physicians in, in, in clinical setting. But soon when we have started to think more deeply, deeply uh, autonomy, we realize that it's much more than on, only freedom. Maybe I think the freed, uh, freedom is kind of a core, uh, out layer of, of the autonomy and, and the real gore core of the autonomy or real not not in, in, in the in the autonomy is, is actually about obligation and and, and need of self regulation and, and trust trust between uh, our profession and, and society. And then we have realized that there's actually kind of two layers or two levels of autonomy which we speak about. We o o uh, speak about pro our professional autonomy, what kind of autonomy we have a, as a profession, and then individual autonomy, autonom individual autonomy of the physician. And maybe there are some, some instances when these two autonomies can even be in conflict. For, for example, the self-regulation of our profession can, can a little bit diminish the autonomy of the, of the uh, physician. Then we have also realized that uh, self-regulation is actually quite demanding task and maybe a kind of very broad autonomy is something which we actually don't want to have. It's, 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 maybe it's good that it's somewhat lim limited. One issue here is, for, for example, in Finland, 
uh, who, who decides uh, or regulates who can uh, practice as a physician uh, or which physicians are ca capable enough to practice as a physician in Finland. And that's decided by authorities of the society in Finland and maybe that decision making that autonomy in that respect is something we actually don't want or it, it would be quite a big burden for our, our profession. Actually, what, what I want to also say that autonomy as a t term is uh, uh, quite uh, uh, known to every Finnish person or there's a special place in, for, for Finnish people and also Finnish, Finnish uh, physicians, this term because uh, uh, Finland as a nation was really a born in, in 19th century between 1812 and 1917 when we were autonomous part of part of Russia and that autonomy was very important for us and we think very good part of us. But in, in later, in uh, uh, late times of the autonomy, there was some problems with Russia and, and they tried to diminish our autonomy. Then we got our independence. But, but this thing can actually be, be a little bit, uh, 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 if we have some, some uh, uh, differences on how we think about autonomy, this can influence actually how, how Finnish people think about also professional autonomy. Uh, well, uh, what is then professional autonomy? How we have thought about the uh, uh, thought about it? Uh, here is uh, uh, how uh, Declaration of World Medical Association says it. I think uh, Indrek also explained it quite quite deeply. But uh, here are the two two ideas. I think quite nicely put the freedom, but then again the other side of the coin, the need need and responsibility to self-regulate. In our process, we have uh, approached, approached the definition from kind of uh, from that, this, uh, this uh, perspective that it's kind of a contract with a society. Our profession and a society has a contract where a profession has, uh, or the society has given some obligations to the profession like treat patients and treat patients according to the best interest of the patient and contribute to public health. But then society has given some autonomy for us uh, uh, to meet these obligations. And ac additionally, uh, society has, has given also some special rights to physicians as a profession and individual physicians also, like Finnish law says that uh, legislation says that uh, uh, only physician can decide uh, on diagnosis and only physician can decide on treatment and also only physician can prescribe drugs and uh, that's, that is some, some rights which the other members of the society don't have. Uh, our uh, Heike Palve, the head of, uh, head of uh, our uh, Medical Association has, has put this, I think, quite nicely in the nutshell that what is autonomy is, autonomy is about the freedom to self-regulate. I think there comes these two sides quite nicely together. So, uh, like the declaration of World Medical Association says that uh, our profession has, has to set our own rules when necessary so that uh, our profession meets the expectations what the patients and society is expecting us or the, we meet these obligations but the society doesn't need to make these rules that we we, we, we do it by them ourselves and in Finland we have a uh, many many uh, norms of Finnish medical association which are binding for our members so our members have to follow these there are about 10 different uh, guidelines of this kind, especially on, on, on patient physician relationship, for example, confidentiality, uh, about how physicians should uh, make uh, doctor statements on, on patients and, and uh, what kind of uh, relationship physicians should have with pharmaceutical industry and how uh, physicians should market their own, own uh, services and so on. So that, 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 that is the kind of a tool for self-regulation for, for us. 
But then we have a, a realized that actually the kind of a core or, or core of the autonomy is that is the trust, and without kind of a mutual trust between society and profession, we couldn't have a, ha, have the autonomy, and also mutual trust between physicians and patients is essential for for the autonomy, and that way, as a trust must be earned all the time, actually autonomy also must be earned all the time, and. And like trust is, is uh, when, when we lose it, it's very hard to get back at the same, similarly, the autonomy is, is, uh, is must be difficult to get, get back if we lose it. And that's why it's, it's very important to all the, like periodically assess what is the current state of the autonomy. And actually, when we have reached this point, we realize that there's also the threat of, to autonomy can come from the outside, like first we think that society is like threatening our autonomy of patients or some other party, but actually there can be also threat of the autonomy from inside also. For example, if we fail to, to, uh, to, to perform, perform the necessary self-regulation. Well then, uh, some... Uh, some uh, thing, things on, on current autonomy which, uh, which have been brought up in, in our process until now. First of all, healthcare system, which is of course the most important context to physicians and, and maybe also for our, our autonomy. And that is constantly in, in changing. Like I said, regulation is increasing the uh, intention of the increasing regulation is, of course, good. We are trying to achieve better quality, better patient safety, more co more cost-effectiveness system. But but in downside, kind of is is that maybe maybe it has some influence on on our o autonomy. Information technology is something which have have come in in healthcare for last two decades. And, and uh, are coming or developing all the time and, and changing our healthcare system in, in near future also. And that can have some, some uh, influences on autonomy. For example, it, it gives better, better tools to steer and monitor our healthcare system and that way also steer and monitor individual physicians and what, what that means from the perspective of autonomy. Also, uh, I think a big megatrend in, in healthcare system is that it becomes more and more complex and patient pathways are becoming more and more complex, which means that healthcare is more and more teamwork, not, not so, so only done by one patient, is not treated by only one physician anymore, so, but, but different. M many, many physicians and also many other healthcare professionals what, this, what does this mean from, from the perspective of physicians' individual autonomy? Is it narrowing it? Well, our clinical autonomy, which is, must be the heart of, heart of our autonomy, we think that uh, it's, it's surviving and, and good, but it's some, somewhat still somewhat limited. And then maybe the biggest challenge is that the gap between possibilities of medicine and resources are growing all the time. I have two, two slides about that more closely later. We have also thought in our process, what is the difference between, between public sector and private sector in, in autonomy? In Finland, we have a quite, quite big, large private healthcare sector, and at least in terms who sets the limits to resources is different between these uh, sectors. So in private sector, the limits are set by how deep the pockets of the patient is, and in public sector, limits are set by the pockets of the society. And that, does that mean that there's a difference in autonomy also between these two sectors? Uh, topical issue in Finland is also that should physicians have their have the right to refuse to treat patients to the physician's own ethical views. And currently it is, uh, physician doesn't have this, this right in, 
Finland. And of course, the kind of a practical examples are prescribing contraceptives and performing abortions. A small part of Finnish physicians think that these are like totally wrong and shouldn't be performed at all. And, uh, and the question is that should they have the right to refuse to say, I'm, I'm not going to do that some, some other, other, other uh, uh, physician should do them. Or actually, physician could, uh, could say to the patient that you shouldn't do that at all. And I, I think this, this is a very interesting question. It's not brought actually up by, by our profession, but it's brought up uh, one political party in Finland, uh, um, which is a Christian Democratic Party, which is quite sm small, but still in the government currently. And, and uh, they have brought up and this issue, and, and that's why we have to have to think that. And uh, maybe this is one example where it can be so that kind of uh, autonomy of the physician and autonomy of the profession is somewhat in conflict. Our ethical guidelines say that physicians have to treat, give the treatment to the patient, and, and also our ethical code says that contraceptives and abortion in, in some cases is okay, but then the standpoint of the, of the, of the individual physician can be different here. One big megatrend also which influences uh, uh, the physician autonomy long term, I think, is, is the increasing empowerment of the patient. This, at least in Finland, has been happening for the last two decades, that the role of the patient is more and more strong. Uh, and, and the question is that how, how this influences to our autonomy when patients is turning more and more consumers. It's not anymore only physician who makes the de decision on the treatment, but it's uh, patient has come there also to decide and, and it's the future that patient is the decision maker and not the physician anymore. Uh, physicians are moving to consultants or something like that. Uh, possibilities of self-care are increasing. Uh, access to medical information of the public is, is, is more and more easier and, and actually uh, patients have, have more knowledge about the treatment and diseases than, than previously and maybe they are more ca capable on, on deciding on, on treatments and so on. Uh, even self-diagnostics, what does that mean from the perspective of autonomy? Increasing patient choice is a topical question in Finland. It's very heated political debate is that just currently we have a parliament elections in next week. Next Sunday we have parliament ele elections and one big issue in the elections is that should we increase patient choice in our public health care system. And, and, and then from autonomy perspective of physicians autonomy it can have some influence to autonomy. But then we have thought that, well, maybe the first thought is that uh, increasing patient autonomy, you can say that it's kind of autonomy of the patient is increasing. It is away from the physician's autonomy, or the autonomy of physician is, is dim diminishing at the same time. But you can maybe also think otherwise, uh, other way that this increasing autonomy is a little bit related to uh, society and it's kind of uh, limiting the choices of the society or, or, or uh, uh, decision making of the society but not to the autonomy of the physician and can it be even so that uh, increasing autonomy of the patient means increasing autonomy of physician. I think this is quite a complex question and, and I don't have, a, have any final idea on, on that. Then uh, about private sector. Uh, their autonomy is also a topical question. There, in private private sector, uh, physicians traditionally has have worked in Finland as an independent, self-employed professionals. So even though they would have an office in some bigger, bigger uh, health private health center owned by by bigger company, they are not employees of that company, but they are uh, self-employed professionals having contract with that company. And uh, uh, nowadays, uh, there is 
quite many issues actually where, where these companies and also insurance companies, private insurance companies are, are trying to start to regulate the system more and more and, and this is felt that it's it's going to going to limit the autonomy of the physician. One one uh, kind of uh, uh, action, uh, typical question there is that should di there be age limit of the doctor working working as a physician? In Finland, the license to work as a physician is a lifelong. So, uh, like I have gotten my license 15 years ago, I, I have the right to to work as a physician even even when I'm 100 years. Old, if I, I see that that's that's the kind of a good thing, but uh, these uh, now these private companies who runs these health health centers are are thinking that there should be some age limits, and I think one of these big companies have even set now the age limit of 70 years and saying that we we are not taking taking here uh, doctors which are more older than 70 years old. And this have kind of raised the discussion that is this okay, limiting kind of limiting autonomy of the individual physician that that way, and if it's so, who should set these age limits, or who should set the age limit? Is, is it these private companies, or should they be set by by our profession, by self-regulation, which could be kind of an autonomy, uh, a path of the autonomy, or should they be set by by the society? Then uh, about physician training, uh, I think the physician training, both basic studies and specialist training in, in Finland has been quite in quite strong hand, hands of our profession. Maybe not in strong hands of the Finnish Medical Association, but in strong hands of medical faculties, which of course are, are run by physicians. Uh, Perhaps only thing which is not in the power of of our our profession is is the intake to medical school, which is actually a thing which Finnish Medical Association would like to have influ in, influenced influence or decide at least earlier. But the contents of the training has been very strong hands of the, our profession. But no, now the new thing is that we changed the le legislation so that there would be will be will be new committee, permanent national committee, which steer the specialist training. It will steer the contents of the training and also intake and where, where the uh, uh, specialist places are, are set up in ge geographically, in what universities, what, what hospitals and so on. And that has influence, uh, must, must have some influence to our professional autonomy. Is it is it which kind of influence that we'll see? I think the important question is that do we as a profession take a strong strong role in this new committee, or which kind of role we will have in in this this new committee as a as a profession? Continuous medical education is also a very topical issue in Finland. Uh, like I said, uh, license to Practice as a physician is a lifelong in Finland, and there is uh, no no assessment of continuous medical education in, in Finland. So, uh, uh, not the society and not so much even our profession is not regulating what is adequate continuous medical education. How what what is the adequate adequate kind of uh, uh, training which physicians should, should make annually to, to keep up the skills and, and knowledge. And uh, this is now residing in individual physicians. Every individual physician are themselves responsible that, that adequate training is, is, is done. But as maybe you know, there is, uh, this is not the case in many, I don't know how it's in Estonia, but in many, many other European Union countries, this is not so that that the permit is lifelong, not depending what you, what you do, and uh, uh, it's called recertification, meaning that you have to prove every, for example, five years that you have attended enough to continue medical education. And and we we see in Finnish Medical Association that this is coming to Finland. If not otherwise, then the, in in some point in future the. the uh, uh, 
European Union will, will force Finland to do, implement this in, in a way or another. And then from the point of autonomy, the interesting question is, of course, or important question is that uh, if this, when, when this recertification is coming, should, should we implement it uh, by self-regulation or should it be implemented by the society? And at least first steps which ha we have made on this are like towards the path to autonomy. We have a set up a, a kind of a, a web system for, for, for physicians to, to where physicians can, can record all the continuous medical education where he or she has attended and a little bit assess uh, is, it, is it kind of a adequate training. It's quite rough, the system, but, but this is the kind of a first step. And I think the idea of us is that in future there is some recertification kind of system, but it's it's regulated and done implemented by by us. Then our ethical code, which is at least I think very strongly also rela related to to autonomy in that way that of course the profession must have a have a autonomy to define its own ethical code. And secondly profession must have, have a, uh, enough autonomy to act according to that code. And in this respect, we, in Finland, we have uh, two problems. First is that the uh, current law says that the physician must inform bo police if the patient uh, which physician is, is treating is not capable of carrying a gun uh, due to medical reason. And this obligation is, doesn't really relate to the fact that has the patient a gun or has the, even the patient have a, have a license to carry a gun. Every patient you have to inform if you, if you assess that it's not, not capable of carrying a gun. And this is, of course, against uh, confidentiality of the physician-patient relationship. And actually our physicians are not, not following this law very very good. Well, actually, two or maybe four, four weeks ago, Parliament decided that they are going to change this law and take this obligation away. So, so problem is just now solved. Second issue is about illegal immigrants. In Fil Finland, illegal immigrants, even though they would stay in Finland long time and live in Finland, they are not entitled to public health care services. And our ethical code says that Physicians must have a possibility to treat patients irrespective of the status of the status of the patient in the society. And here, status of the patient in a society, so being illegal immigrant, has a big influence on, on getting uh, appropriate care. And that's something we are, it's not solved yet, but, but there's a heated debate actually in, in Finland that should this be done. And, and we are trying to get it forward. Then I have two cases, a uh, little bit more thinking, trying to think the future. Uh, first is about clinical autonomy, which is, of course, kind of heart of our autonomy. And, and uh, of course, the uh, idea is that the physician must have autonomy to treat patients according to physician's best judgment, but of course, this doesn't mean that uh, we can treat patients any way we like, but we have a strong obligation to act for the best interest of the patient. And to achieve this, uh, profession has, has many policies which kind of limits this kind of a total freedom. Freedom and, and Finnish Medical Association have, have several guidelines, like, like I said. Second thing which is kind of a self-regulation in Finland is, is that we have a second national association of doctors in Finland called uh, Medical Associ Association Duodekim and uh, about 85% of Finnish medical doctors belong to that organization also. And it's one of the important tasks of this association is that it, it creates and maintains current care guidelines. There's a, about 100 national uh, care guidelines made, made by this and, and maintained by Duodekim. 
and they are not so binding as, as the norms of Finnish medical association, but, but the kind of a strong idea is that every, every uh, uh, physician in Finland should follow these, these guidelines when treating patients. Uh, the focus of these guidelines is more in the effectiveness, so not in the cost effectiveness. I come to this uh, in next slide. Because the challenge, I think in, the biggest challenge in, in this clinical autonomy is that the limits of the healthcare resources are more and more visible. Of course, there always have been limited resources and always have been situations that the, we cannot give the best possible treatment to every patient, but I think the uh, uh, limit of the resources has, been, come, has become more, more and more visible. Maybe the, the, what's behind there is maybe the gap between the resources and, and, and uh, possibilities is actually increasing, or it can be also that the patient empowerment has led to that, that patients are more and more aware that, okay, I didn't receive the top-notch, best possible treatment, but adequate treatment. But in any case, the, it's becoming more, more and more visible, and, and uh, perhaps because of this, or, or in line with this, uh, we have placed increasing emphasis on, on evidence-based medicine and cost effectiveness and, and this kind of a creation of these clinical guidelines, for example. And the positive side, of course, about this is that it leads more efficient use of resources and, and better equity between the patients. But, but is it decreasing our autonomy, especially like individual autonomy of the physician? One, one uh, topical issue in Finland is that uh, uh, one year ago uh, we had had a legislation change which uh, uh, enacted new uh, permanent committee in, in national level called National Benefit Basket Committee, which has a huge task to kind of lead to detail, to make a detailed description or detailed definition of what, what is the Finnish benefit basket. I think you, you in Estonia you have that kind of a system already, but in Finland this kind of a priority setting decisions ha, uh, have been made in, in individual health centers and individual hospitals, and there are no national level guidelines. That kind of guidelines uh, ha, ha, not have been existing in Finland, but not, now it's going to be done. And uh, some, one, one can see, that maybe think that this can be a threat also to autonomy, that there is a new national body who decides how we treat the patient and we cannot treat the patients as we would see, see, see the best. So here we have to think what, what is the kind of a desired future of clinical autonomy. And one approach which has been presented in our process that maybe we have to accept this limited clinical autonomy of individual physicians, but, but we can take kind of a strong autonomy of the profession. And that would, that would need uh, first kind of a little bit uh, change, change our thinking that we have to a little bit maybe shift the focus from only effectiveness to cost effectiveness. And secondly, which would be more concrete action would be that we, we would take strong, strong role in, in this uh, be, be, national benefit basket committee or in strong role in, in defining this benefit basket. And that would be, that would kind of survive our profession, professional autonomy on, on deciding on, on limits, limits of, of healthcare and limits of treatment, even though the individual autonomy would a little bit be more limited than, than currently. Second example is about uh, transparency of the e economical relations between physicians and pharmaceutical industry. Uh, uh, there's, uh, of course, the underlying thing is that we have to have to uh, cooperate with the pharmaceutical industry so that it doesn't have any negative influence on, on care. 
an, an important thing is that the society also must trust and patients must trust that we do so. Uh, and traditionally this uh, has been, uh, uh, this re relationship has been um, regulated by our profession. We have an ethical code or, or code which, which says how, how physicians should cooperate with the pharmaceutical industry. But there hasn't been any, any transparency on, on kind of economical ties, ties between, between physicians and pharmaceutical industry. Our profession hasn't monitored them, but society hasn't either monitored them. But now, at least in Finland, we have a new trend in society, in, in many sectors of the society, that there should be more transparency on, on economical things and especially economical ties. Uh, I think the lead and leading, leading sector here is, uh, is a politics. In, in Finland, last 10 years, there have been passed many laws which make, make uh, ties of politicians, economical ties of politicians more transparent and they have to report these ties and so on. And, and many, many kind of uh, different uh, reg regulations on that. And now this, this thinking has come also to healthcare sector. And, and society is, is saying that there should be should be transparency or also here. And so we have this challenge in, to increase transparency. Then we have to think what should be again to be the desired future. Should this transparency be implemented by our profession ourselves, kind of self-regulation, which would be kind of a sign of the strong autonomy, or should it, should we left this uh, uh, implementation to the society. And our first approach is that we are going to implement this by, by uh, self-regulation. Uh, we have, uh, a year ago, we changed our, our, uh, this code about physicians and, and and pharmaceutical industries relationship so that physicians must must reveal all the economical ties uh, when <coughs> all the economical ties to pharmaceutical companies and the pharmaceutical companies are starting to report annually in, in individual level how many how much euros every doctor has has gotten from from those companies even either in money or in, in as education or, or so on and our economic our guide guideline for our members says that you should not deny there's a possibility to physicians to deny this this reporting but our our guideline says that you shouldn't do that it's against the best interest of our profession but the challenge is here that, that this kind of transparency is not easily accepted by all physicians there some physicians not thinking that this is not very very good thing and maybe at least if we think about short term, uh, in short term, the easiest thing for the profession would, would, would be that we actually would leave this to the society and society would put this kind of a regulations if, 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 if it really sees that it's so important. But at least I think it, this is actually very good not as a, pr as, as a problem, but uh, also there's a positive side that this is a very good situation or very good point for uh, our profession to show the society that we are really capable of good autonomy and, and be a responsible, responsible to the society and we are like willingly, willingly taking all the new, new thinking of the society by ourselves that society don't have to force us to do that. In any case, uh, this relationship is, is uh, or if we, if we some, somehow fail to implement this transparency, either by the, regulated by the society or us, we, we are, there's a threat, real threat, that we lose the trust to the society and patients, which, which is, of course, the cornerstone of, of autonomy. Then I have a last slide, a few conclude, conclusions about about autonomy. Um, firstly, it's clear that the autonomy is something which is very fundamental to our profession and also very fundamental of being physician. And actually, it is really related 
more, more or less anything we do or every relationship with other, other actors in the society and, and in healthcare system. And so it's a so it's very, very important thing to, th thing to discuss and discuss about autonomy. It leads to very inter interesting, interesting th things. Uh, secondly, uh, autonomy is, uh, I, I think, and we are, have found that it's really essential. It's without without clinical autonomy, physicians couldn't act for the best interest of the patient. So, so autonomy is something we we don't don't there's we shouldn't shouldn't lo lose in any any circumstance. Uh, so far, our approach has raised very interesting discussion, like said, and and and. Uh, new thinking on, on what is our relationship to society and what, what is our re relationship and role in, in healthcare system and also what is our role in the society, what is the, our profession's role actually in the society and what is our relationship to the patients and how it's going to change. And last point is that a, a, a gradual change in autonomy is inevitable. It's something which is not not like a... in, in constant situation, but it's changing because the society is changing, because healthcare system is changing, patients are changing. Then the question is that is this change positive or negative, or what is the uh, desired future where we would like to uh, develop this physician autonomy? And I think quite much depends actually on us, how we adjust to these changes in society. and and, and medical science and, and patients. Okay, thank you. Th these are some, some ideas which has been brought up in, in our process. And, and after this year, maybe we are even more, more wise about this when we have uh, ended this, our project. Thank you.